Hi everybody, it's Kevin of Bear Creek again. Uh, beautiful day here on Sunday. Uh, before we're gonna have a whole week of uh, of sunshine or you know, of rain going on. Uh, I've got uh, a package installed for us today. So um, I've got actually four of them to install, and uh, and then today, and then I got two more tomorrow. But I I don't think I'll, I'll need to show you. I think you'll get the pretty good idea of uh, of what we're doing. Um, this is these are the two nukes uh, from the other day. If you remember my uh, my video that I put out, uh, I installed the uh, the two splits with the Saskatraz queens, and uh, one Saskatraz queen was dead. So the one on the right is hiveless. So today, what I'm actually going to do with our my four packages is I'm going to do a little experiment. Um, I'm going to hive them in different style nukes and uh, full size boxes to see once and for all um, whether a package really does excel and and, uh, and and expand quicker in a smaller nuke box than it does in a, in a larger 10 frame box. Uh, we've heard that before myself I think it's true, but I just want to uh, I want to try this for myself. Just see for myself, side by side by side. I got four four packages, three pound packages. They're all the same style queens. They're all the same amount of bees. Um, so you know th that's what I'm going to do. The only difference being this uh, four frame nuke here on the right is uh, queenless. So rather than just hive um, another box uh, full of um, Bees. What I'm going to do is uh, add a box to this because it's already got uh, a frame of brood, and I shook a frame of bees in there, and uh, it's got a frame feeder and a and a, and a frameless, uh, or I mean, foundationless frame in there, and uh, so it's already got a head start. I'm just going to add the queen to the to the foundationless frame, and uh, and then install four frames on top of that, and uh, dump the bees into that box. And uh, I'll let it go, and that should actually, theoretically, explode faster than any any of them that I've got. Simply because they got a little bit of a head start. The first thing I have to do, though, is I, although I, I I know I threw cat brood into that hive, um, there might have been some eggs in there that I wasn't aware of. It was a a couple of days ago. If they have started drawing queen cells out, I'm going to have to know that and take care of that before I install a queen in there. So I'm going to take a look at that one frame just to see if there's any queen cells installed. Uh, on a personal note, I, uh, you probably, if you followed me for a while, you probably notice uh, an old dog that likes to photobomb in my apiary walking around with me. My old uh, champion, Storm, he's got more titles, uh, more retrieving titles than you can shake a stick at. But the uh, reason I, we had to say goodbye to him yesterday so it's gonna be a little lonelier out here um, in the apiary for both of us but uh, I'll still have Breeze he's my hunting partner but it was uh, it was really sad to lose a, a member of the family so anyways uh, to take my mind off that get in my bees and uh, get this going and what I'm gonna do is I'm back, gonna back the camera up and I'm gonna set the apiary up first I've got a I've got a hive over here that had a dead out, and I'm going to uh, assort the frames and put frame feeders in uh, and get that ready for the install for the bees. And then once I get all the hives ready to put bees in, uh, I'll, uh, I'll bring it forward and then and that bring the camera forward and kind of show you really what, what I'm doing. So uh, I'm going to probably speed up this film because it's probably going to take a little bit for me to to set this up, so I'll probably speed this, uh, speed the, speed the film up, just so you uh, you don't have to sit and watch me uh, um, monkey around for 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 30 minutes getting this all set up. So, okay, let's go.
Okay, so I've uh, I've got each of these hives set up with a frame feeder, and uh, what I'm going to do now is um, fill them first, and then um, and then we'll get ready. I'm going to fill these, and then I'm going to take a look at that nuke right there, do a quick inspection on it, see if it's indeed queenless, and then. Uh, if it, if it uh, has some queen cells, I'll destroy the queen cells and just get it ready for a second box. I'll put this box right here on it. So while I'm waiting for that to fill up, uh, when you're doing a an, an apiary that's uh, that's outside of your home apiary. Uh, one of the things you'll run into is bringing all the equipment with you that you're going to need for that day, and not forgetting to bring anything out because it can actually, I mean, absolutely ruin what you had planned if you don't absolutely bring everything. So, I uh, I recommend a checklist uh, of things that you're going to need, even if you write it on a on a notebook paper and just you know this is everything I need and then just check 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 uh, today I got you know I, I got extra frames I got my B funnel I got an extra box I got this extra box I had enough nukes with frames that I wanted in in each one uh, I had some uh, plastic inner covers made that I brought uh, my uh, tool belt my uh, hive jacket or you know my, my uh, hive jacket uh, veil uh, my smoker smoker fuel a lighter um, you know the bees if you have those to bring obviously you need that um, you know I I, uh, I ran out I got everything oh yeah and I brought a, a spray sprayer for uh, for water for spraying the, the bees down before I hive them because in a package you're gonna want to do that either with sugar water or water um, you know, so you got to bring that out. I uh, I left home. I got got uh, about a quarter of the way here, and bam, it hit me. I forgot my sugar syrup, which is overfilling. <laughs> Actually, it wasn't overfilling. I thought it was. Um, but and then uh, I got the sugar syrup in the truck, and I jumped in the truck, and I was about to take off pollen patties. I needed pollen patties, so I had to get those. So it's really good to have a checklist of things to do when you're, especially when you're in an out apiary away from your house, so you don't have to make several trips in a day or in an afternoon back to your apiary for things that you might have forgotten. Just a tip. Okay, let's uh, let's take a look at this hive and uh, and see if uh, they've created any queen cells or anything.
Okay. There is a serious roar in here, so I'm gonna guess. Uh, I'm gonna guess it's. Uh, it is queenless. Frame feeders make these boxes really, 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 really tight. Really, really tight. Unfortunately. Ah, oh, Jesus. Well, there's pollen in there, that's good. So there was a queen cell that they had made full of royal jelly. I should have showed it to you, but uh, oh well, I just dropped all the royal jelly down there, but. I'm just making sure there's no queen on here. I don't think so.
Oh, you're getting a little feisty here. All right. I'm going to put that on just for a second. So, what we got here is a three pound package of bees with a can of syrup. Uh, no top plate, so you gotta remember a board so you can put it on there. And uh, if you can see this, right there, there's a little plastic clip right here that slides along the slot. That's where the queen cage is attached, and it's a JZBZ queen cage. So it's not like your typical three hole queen cage. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to wet down these bees. Get them good and wet, so that they don't they don't have they don't want to fly anywhere. All right. Okay, I got my replacement board here for the syrup. So, this is the syrup. I just got a couple of dings in it, and we'll, we'll, we'll actually save these cans and uh, we'll use the syrup ourselves. But now, what we got to do is uh, get that queen cage out of there. So there's the queen, alive and well. I'm just gonna stick her in my pocket here for a second. I'm gonna get a pair of gloves. Okay. So in case you never saw a JZBZ queen cage before, uh, there it is. That's what it looks like. This actually flips open you can and you can put the the queen in there there's a little tab right here you can pop open too but this is actually the candy end so you just pull this off to expose the the uh the candy now if you don't want so much candy in there you can scrape some out if you wish um i'm actually going to get a a little uh paper clip and uh i'm just going to stick it slide it right through there So there it is, the queen's down there. I'm just gonna take this and I'm just gonna push it through the candy ever so slightly. And that's it. And that'll just give the bees a little heads up. Just wanna make sure that the queen is down on the bottom when you're doing this. And uh, they'll chew this out and then, and then they'll release her. And you either wanna install it horiz whoops, horizontally like this or you can uh, turn it down, uh, down like this. You don't want to do this because that candy can actually drip down on her, so you never want to do that. So either like this or like this when you uh, install it. So what I have is a zip tie, and I'm just gonna zip it to it. Just 
just like so. Okay, I hope you can see that a little bit better. And then I'm gonna clip this off right now. Okay, that's what we're gonna do. Okay, so what I did was I installed a, a sheet of paper, no queen excluder needed, uh, just to slow down the introduction between the, the uh, bees that are existing in there and the new bees that I'm dumping in top. I slit the newspaper uh, so that they can chew through it very, very quickly, very, very easily, because there's no vent holes here, um, and, and, and access that uh, down there and then I'll put I'll put the frames in but another reason why I wanted to install that newspaper is right below here is the uh, frame feeder with the two ports and if I just dump bees in there a bunch of them are just gonna go right down the ports and they're gonna drown so the, the newspaper will stop that from happening so there was two reasons for that okay so I'm gonna put a pair of gloves on and we'll get going okay Okay. Okay, because I'm sealing them up a little bit, I'm actually going to spray a little water in this comb just to give them a little water. And it's already got honey in it too, so they'll have pretty much everything they need.
Okay, this is my German hive bottom. Uh, this setup is going to be just slightly different. Um, the bees are actually going to go into the bottom of the the bottom of the uh, hive bottom. I'll show you what I'm talking about in a second. Okay. We got the queen cage in there. And then I pull off the candy end right here. There we go. I'm going to take that. Put that end off, and uh, and there we go. Now with the German hive bottom, it makes it easier to hive the bees because all we do is dump them in the false floor, and then we install the floor back on, put the deep on, and then uh, away we go. Okay, that's done. We put the floor back on right here. Whoops. Just like that. I do that. The bees will migrate up. To the queen I've got the bottom closed off with a small entrance so that they can defend it I put the uh, inner lid on and I'm done you see how easy that was especially you Brad you were asking about it so now the bees are there, they'll migrate up, they'll surround the queen, release the queen, and it'll become a hive. Uh, so I'm not going to disturb these hives for about seven days. And um, then we'll come back and we'll check, see if the queen's been released and any progress made. Hey everyone, sorry about that. Uh, my camera crapped out on me sometime during this video and I didn't get the other two packages installed. Um, ended up talking to myself for the last half hour apparently. Uh, between my phone and my uh, and my camera there was a uh, Wi-Fi disconnect and unbeknownst to me it stopped recording. So, um, you know, didn't record the last, like I said, the last half hour, the last two package installs. Um, not that you haven't seen that before, know what I was doing, but uh, so you you're, you get the point. I didn't. I don't think you really needed the uh, the extra half hour, anyways. A um, couple of things I learned uh, during the install. One was uh, my uh, 
my B funnel is good for, uh, which is why I built it, single frame to, to uh, uh, brush off single frames into the B funnel, uh, into, a, into a box, one, one frame at a time. That's what it's designed for, that's what it's intended. I attempted to try to dump a package in it and it overloaded the funnel and they, they it, it was a little hard getting them, getting them out. I had actually flipped the funnel over and dumped them in. So that was kind of a humorous uh, little, uh, uh, little moment. No big deal. Everything went really fine. Um, another thing I learned, if you saw the video, well, you, if you watched the video, obviously, uh, the German hive bottom uh, package installation was the absolute easiest installation I have ever done for a package. Um, everything went extremely well. Uh, number two, I know I'll probably get some comments that uh, that I use too much water on the bees. I, I'm, I'm sorry, bees get rained on all the time. It's it's really not that big of a deal. The bees were fine. They were they were moving in and out very very quickly um, after I installed them all. Um, they were very very they were they were okay. Um, that much water, all it is is just to stop them from from flying. They'll dry off soon enough. And it's uh, honestly, I watched bees and sugar water. Um, not able to uh, to uh, or they stick to things and they die really really quick uh, so I, I kind of wanted to get away from just using sugar water to spray on the bees in a package um, so I watched the video from the German beekeeper um, back in the 90s spraying just water and uh, it seemed to work out just fine for them so that's why I used just water um, it's 40 degrees today, it's rainy. Very, 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 the bees are not active really at all. They're sitting in clusters today. Uh, you know, uh, for the package installs, everything, you know, is good because they all have frame feeders inside, so they should have access to the um, sugar water and, uh, and release the, once they release the queen, everything should go and she should start laying. I got I gave them all the pollen patties, so everybody should be fat and happy. Um, another thing I just wanted to really, really quickly say, I'm going to go off on a little bit of a rant here, and um, I hope you will indulge me. Um, when I picked up my packages, those four packages that I installed, um, I had been searching for carniolan packages uh, throughout uh, Wisconsin uh, for the main reason because I, I was late in ordering them only because um, more hives of mine died than I had anticipated dying so I needed the bees for my breeding program I wanted the carniolan specific I got a couple packages of Minnesota hygienics which were supposed to be delivered today but are now delayed again for the fourth time this this month uh, and may be here on Wednesday. We not we're not sure, but it snowed down in southern Wisconsin, and that's the excuse reason that they used. Anyways, so I went down there and picked up my four packages, and I got carniolan specific for my queen rearing because all these bees that I'm installing are resource bees for a specific reason because I want to create a quality of mutt that overwinters well here in central Wisconsin. That's it, that's what my goal was. So that's why I wanted these carniolans. For the drones, not for the honey or anything, but carniolans have uh, very good winter capabilities. They also slow play their stores in the winter, and they also are good producers of honey. Um, they shut down at the right time for us, for our region here, and they start back up, uh, and, they, and they actually, in, in the, cooler weather they will actually start a little earlier than Italians. Italians are just they just roll through. Anyways, back to my, my little rant. I got to the uh, to the uh, bee supplier and uh, guy sells three thousand packages a year They're located in southern Wisconsin. They bring their bees back from um, from California. That's where they winter them. And uh, so I, I get, they had told me that they were going to be available Sunday, so I went down there to go get them. They had them ready. Um, you know, I walked in, they, they had a, a few guys working there, and the guy says, uh, how many? You know, and I said, four, and he goes, two or three pounders, and I said, three pounders. Okay, so he goes in the back, I go, Carney Owens. I just yelled to him, and he goes, I think that's all we got. 
He says, uh, he says we're kind of relegated by uh, what the queen suppliers gave, give us. And I'm just like, okay. Didn't matter to me as long as they were Kearney Owens, I was good with it. If they're all Kearney Owens, that's all he's selling, fine. But that's the reason I went to this guy, just, just to put it out there. So I had an outstanding balance, and the owner was there, and he was, he was taking down my orders, asked for my name, and he's like, okay. So I, uh, he gave me the balance, and I'm, I shelled over the money. And, uh, and I just, out of the top of my head, I go, Carney Owens, right? And he said, well, actually, he goes, they're, they're Minnesota Hygienics. He said, but, but basically, they're Kearney Owens. And that was just, it just caught me off guard. And uh, I didn't say a word. And I just collected my bees and I left. And uh, and I just wanted to share something with you. Minnesota Hygienic is a trait. It's a hygienic bee developed by the University of Minnesota. Doesn't mean winter hardy. Doesn't mean carniolan. That's not the breed of bee that was used. Um, they're actually mutts, and they were selected traits from probably a variety of different species of bees for their hygienic ability. Has nothing to do with their honey. Has honey ability. Has nothing to do with their wintering ability. Has nothing to do with anything other than their hygienic behavior of removing, uh, you know, uh, brood that is diseased or maybe even mite infested. I'm going to guess that's probably the um, uh, the biggest reason was um, uncapping and, and uh, being able to detect problems with the brood, regardless of the matter. They weren't Minnesota or they weren't Carniolan bees and that's what he was selling uh, he sold me Carniolans in, but he sold me Minnesota hygienic bees in the guise of being a Carniolan and that is 100% total misinformation um, like I said just because it says Minnesota in, in the uh, description does not mean it's winter hardy they're actually developed I think out in out west in California uh, so, uh, but that for a man that uh, that sells 3,000 packages a year, produces honey, to give out that kind of misinformation to uh, uninformed hobby beekeepers is a complete misrepresentation. I also overheard them them discussing, and they were talking about Wisconsin bees. Uh, his bees are Wisconsin bees. He was telling that to another customer that had came in. And uh, and I'm sorry, but there was nothing Wisconsin about these bees other than this is where they summer. But these bees are, are wintered in California. Uh, the queens are developed in California. And... They are just summered here in Wisconsin, but not a bee that he shook out of that package was born in Wisconsin, not one. But yet he said that these were Wisconsin bees, and that was what what he, what his uh, um, marketing was. Um, again, that kind of misinformation is what gets us into trouble, and the reason why we have to buy bees here in the in the north every single year. One of the reasons. Not, not the only reason, uh, because a lot of our bees are just not well suited to this climate. So it's very, very imperative that uh, we attempt and we try. And I know there's a, quite a few of us out there that are, that are really uh, goal-oriented towards trying to develop a, a breed of queen um, for this northern region. Saskatraz is another one uh, that's a specific what they did. It's got good honey traits. It also has good wintering traits. Um, and it can be done. So I, I'm, a, I'm a big believer in that. And uh, I just want to get one kind of like, it, it's just going to be a mutt. I don't have enough resources here to develop really my own breed. But um, a breed of mutt um, and then using my, my uh, survivor 
winter survivor queens as breeder stock um, can only aid in that development and then trading with other beekeepers that are attempting to do the same thing within our region can only do good things so I'm off my box but just want to throw that out there and just be careful uh, of what your breeders try to tell you um, ask questions I you know I, I asked the guy on the phone and the carney owns yes 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 and when it came down to it that's not what he gave me he did not give me carney owns he gave me Minnesota hygienics and I already had purchased Minnesota hygienics to add to this uh, I needed the carney Owens, so essentially what it did is it really screwed me so uh, always ask the questions um, and be specific as to what you want in your breed of bead, whether it's Russians or Italians or Carniolans or Caucasians or Buckfast or whatever it is that, that, that you feel can help your apiary because all beekeeping is local. It really is. Uh, I'm off my box. Thanks for indulging me. Uh, hopefully I get my bees here in another couple of days. Uh, I was going to install those uh, Minnesota Hygienics out at the farm, but now that I've already got four packages installed out there, um, these Minnesota Hygienics I'll just put here in the backyard because there's no real reason to. I just had two more out at the farm. So it is what it is. Uh, set me back a lot. Uh, it really did. Um, I'm just going to have to kind of roll with the punches and, you know, maybe I can pick up a couple Carniolans, Queens, and, uh, and replace those uh, Queens out there at the farm. So until next time, happy beekeeping. This film is, is dedicated to my dog, Storm, and I miss him. Um, and uh, the apiary is just going to be a little more lonelier uh, without him around. But I still got Breeze, who's over there chewing on a piece of wood. Uh, so at least I got somebody for company. Take care. Talk to you tomorrow.